Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel. And um, a lot of you have been asking me, you know, what or where, why is it that there's this eighth generation? Uh, you know, that's where they draw the line for Windows 11. And I've been looking at this. So this is just Core i5s, but there's the same chart for Core i3s, i7, i9 from uh, Intel. I've been looking at the different uh, specs here. This this chart actually gives you the things that are supported between the generations. And it is interesting because when you look... So if we speak mostly of integrated graphics, for example, let's say that you have an Intel CPU with integrated graphics Apart from the integrated graphics that might not support the level of um, drivers needed for graphics for Windows 11, um, it is true that it's kind of difficult to really understand why such and such is not available. If you look at the fact that they're cutting it at eighth generation, so the eighth generation here of i5, for example, is Q4. 2017. That means it was the it's it it was released at the end of 2017, which is four years old, not even yet. Um, and if you look at the majority of them, are mostly you know 2018 and and later. One of the things you start looking here is yeah, so you're actually deciding that the line is really just four years of of CPU age, which is interesting. And when you look at the details of the each CPU here, pretty much the only thing that um, is different is mostly due to the speed and the power consumption of the processor. So, you know, a little faster, but Honestly, from one generation to the other, the speed differences with the different Intel processors aren't that great. That It's not that big. Yet, you always try to get the latest generation possible that money can buy when you buy a new PC. Um, so, with this chart, it's obvious that it's difficult to know why they're putting the line to 8th generation. And I think that's open to discussion. And... Honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised that Microsoft does change its mind and, and add a little more. There is a line that you have to draw, that's for sure, when you go with new technologies. But since pretty much all Intel CPUs that were done, uh, were, were made in the last five years, probably have TPM 2.0, um, it's very difficult to understand the place where you drew a line for CPU. The other thing also that I was reading about is that um, those of you that are the Ryzen, the first Ryzen generations, actually, when you look at it, it has FTPM 2.0, and it is technically uh, should be compatible. Um, technically, it's in, it should be in there, and it's not. They, they drew the line at Ryzen 2, 000, you know, later. Ryzen 2000s and later. And you're like, yeah, but um, the Ryzen 1000, why not? This is kind of interesting um, because there's virtualization, virtualization technology. It might not be at the same level everywhere, but still it's there till here on the chart. We have the, the oldest processors of third generation from 2012 um, seem to all support pretty much the same type of instructions um, there's, you know, very little difference except, you know, the Intel Optane memory support or not. Of course, the speed at which it works, um, and a lot of you're testing Windows 10 and, you know, PCs that have sixth or even fifth generation and it seems to work well. So if we talk about mostly, you know, CPU generation with, of course, TPM 2.0, um, I do agree that it's kind of hard to understand why the line was drawn at that level. And I think we'll wait for this because I think it's 
a little early and they're probably going to change a little bit that requirement uh, for Windows 11. But it's it's interesting to see that. Looking at charts, it's difficult to really understand why such and such would not be in, you know, a compatible list for Windows 11. If you're enjoying my videos, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.